Now, my next guests have an incredible story to share. Thomas and his wife, Irinya, have had quite a journey to be here today. Thomas moved to Ukraine in 2015 and married Irinya in 2016 and lived in Lviv. Thomas was advised by the Home Office at the start of the invasion, but understandably did not want to leave without his wife. After a roller coaster of a journey, they're finally safe here in London, and I'm delighted to say I'm joined by both of them here, live in the studio, and an additional very special friend. <laughs> Hello there. What's this one called? Luca. 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 Well, we're, we're, Luca is free to do whatever Luca wants to do. Okay. Um, but let me start, first of all, with the visa situation, because so you're a Brit, Irinia is Ukrainian, just had the Deputy Prime Minister here, mm -hmm. uh, former Deputy Prime Minister Damien Green, saying, it started badly, it's beginning to get better, but it is, yeah, I can see in your eyes, it, it's a work in progress. Tell us your story. Um, basically, I was advised um, by the embassy. I signed up to the embassy mailing list, um, which is a crisis email which comes through. Um, and I was advised at the beginning of the, before the invasion to uh, you know, leave the country on an available commercial flight that was possible. I called the Home Office and the embassy uh, and they said I could get a, you could, I could get a visa for my wife. Um, I had to apply at a visa centre in Kiev. I was a bit Myth by this because I'd realized that the embassy had moved from Kiev to Lviv mm. and they wa wanted us to go to Kiev to go through the visa application. I said, well, you know, if war's going to start, that's one of the first places it's going to start. Yeah. Um, I mean, similar to the French situation where they said it's in Calais, then it was in Paris, then it was in Lille. It was, the day we were meant to go to do this visa application is the day the bombs started dropping. Yeah. So, Did it leave you feeling that you weren't wanted or that you were up against a system that really was just not up to it? Uh, of course, we don't want to leave uh, Ukraine, yeah, but sure. uh, the situation was scared and uh, we decided to go to England. And I'm very happy and I want to see, say a big thank you for government for possibility to be right now next to my husband and with dog. It's miracles that we <laughs> <laughs> go through this, all these things. Yeah, still we have some bureaucratic problem, but I think it will be fixed. It just rules changing so fast. That's a really important point. I'm only about to underline it, because again, talking to my previous guests, is that sometimes you, you get nasty incompetence that just don't want you, but this was kind of just in the circumstances, perhaps understandable incompetence. Yeah, all people are very nice to us and they want to help. It just, it just uh, system can't update in, in time because rules change and uh, government did a big job. We yeah. can be here sure. and uh, Ukrainian family can come here. It's just a little bit pieces, yeah. which is, uh, should be... We, just as you came in, um, or just before you came in, we were, we were talking to Paul, our reporter in Romania, and he was talking to a guy at the end of the yes. piece about the journey that he'd had from... Marvellous journey for everyone. What was your, the journey like for you two? Our journey was uh, heavy. I mean, um, we left Lviv and we were in a five-kilometre queue for 36 hours, moving maybe two metres every hour, um, painfully watching people trudge towards the border with their families, uh, children in tow, uh, and then guys coming back without their wives and children. Just pause, I'm just because we have people who listen on radio as well as watch on television. Uh, these are still pictures of you and your family and other people you came across? These are pictures the that I took from, from the border. Yeah. And that we're now looking at a queue that goes on and on and on, and it's cars and vans and the rest of it. Did you see nasty military stuff as well? No nasty military stuff. I think they're really concentrated on what's going away from the border. Um, there was military movement yeah. towards the border, back and forth, obviously, um, for whatever reason. Mainly in the east and around Kiev. Yeah, around Kiev. I know people in Kiev that have joined uh, their local defence forces, and uh, I know military people. So, you know, it's yeah. a lot of movement. You still have friends and family there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's what we feel like a little bit guilty because we can escape of this situation, but still my mother there, my friend You feel there. guilty for seeking your safety yeah. and to be with your husband? Yeah, it's, it's strange. It's strange. On behalf of everybody watching, I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> it's strange to explain, but it's like a, a colleague, friends, a family still there. They can't, they can't move. And it's, uh, but we will do what we can from here. And like uh, Thomas says before, his voice is his gun, so we can do whatever what we can, the way we can. Uh, so I think my sister basically said, you're better off shooting your mouth off than a gun. 
Yeah, I'd, so, I'd, I'd get out of yeah. it. Yeah. But did, obviously, Irinia left friends and, and, and extended family there as well. Did you leave a business there or a I job left a there? business there. Left a, Is that written off now? No, it's a business. It's it's web-based business, but uh, the bulk of the clientele are from Ukraine. I was doing proofreading, editing, translating, English teaching, mm. working in IT companies, and everything's shut down now. So, you know, I built built something in seven years from nothing. Yeah, we. You know. I said at the beginning of the program um, that that my big fear was that that basically the United States and, and NATO have written Ukraine off. They've conceded it so long as Putin doesn't go any further, not into Poland, not into Romania or anything like that. Do you, as a Ukrainian, fear that your country did its best, but ultimately it will fall to Russia? I think we don't know much what's going on. So uh, just uh, probably my government don't want to make panic. And of course, they prepare for this uh, situation. Uh, and we now Ukrainian army doing the best what uh, they can, and it's very motivated and very brave. And little country fighting for my country, but not just for my country, it's for whole world and for whole Europe. Because the longer Putin can't get what he wants, he becomes more dangerous. So we need support, what we have right now, from whole world. And it's uh, amazing. We feel not alone, and we become stronger of this feeling. So everyone who can help, who can do something for this uh, terrible, uh, against this terrible war we should do and uh, place uh, Putin in prison. <laughs> really, we should do this. Another thing that strikes me, and uh, there are some really clever pieces have been written about it, and, and, and we're being told, stop talking about President Zelensky as a guy who used to be a comedian and one Strictly Come Dancing. He's a hero. He's an absolutely terrific guy. We're seeing and reading and hearing from afar what kind of guy is he, in your eyes, as a Ukrainian? Okay, well, the, when he became president, it was like different. Uh, people feel different. So half of Ukraine vote for him. So he is real president. It's, uh, it's not half, 73%, basically. So we, we wanted to new blood, new people in government. We want to change everything. Uh, but some was not really very positive about this because he don't have big experience of diplomatic all this way. But now we can see he's strong, he's honest, uh, he is our president, and he he's not uh, he's in Kiev, and he he doing he motivated he every day make us sure that everything will be fine. Yeah. So I'm proud of him. And you know, as an objective Brit, what that means when your wife says. He, Zelensky, is still in Kiev. He's, still, he's stepped up to the plate. I mean, he really has, you know, shown, uh, shown strength to his people. You know, he's, he's there. He's, been, he's had the offer to be extracted uh, by SAS or special forces or whatever. He's still there. And that really shows the people that um, he's there 100% and he's, you know, he's, he's sticking to his guns and he's doing the best he can. Uh, I take my hat off to him. You know, uh, incredible. I guess you were probably travelling, or you may have even got here um, by the time that he delivered that impassioned observation where he said, if, God forbid, Ukraine falls, next Moldova, Georgia, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Poland, all the way to the Berlin Wall. Yeah. Your dad was a very senior journalist. You know what the significance sure. of 1989 and the sure. Berlin Wall is. Exactly. Do you think that's credible or is that him just trying to rally the troops? Uh, it's credible. I think it's credible. Um, you know, Putin has, has got, got a bee in his bonnet about the fall of the, fall of the Iron Curtain. And, and, you know, he was in Dresden um, you know, as a KGB officer doing whatever he was doing. And he's just obsessed. He's obsessed with this ex, ex Soviet bloc countries, mm -hmm. uh, this power. You know, I'm not really a political person, but I see what's going on. So, yes, it's very feasible. It's very feasible. Um, you know, if, if, if the, if bombs start dropping in West Ukraine, that's very close to the Polish border. If one of those missiles or one of those bombs goes off course into Poland, it's going to change yeah. the whole. <clears throat> but, but you mentioned aircraft and a question to both of you. Biden again last night on, on, on television saying we won't do the no-fly zone because, as you say, if a missile goes astray or you take mm. out a command and control center in, mm. in just inside Russia, what have you, third world war. Mm. With everything that's at stake, and actually let me come to Irina first on that, with everything that is at stake, and it is your country, it is your family, it is your friends, 
Do you accept that? Do you buy that for the sake of, as it were, global peace? It's a hard question and it's hard to answer. Honestly, of course, I want that Ukrainian will be safe. And honestly, I think that if we will not stop him here, he will go in front, like you said, Poland and uh, other country. So we should do everything it's possibility to do. But of course, it's, we can't decide about this. And we are not NATO. We are, maybe we have uh, 10 years to come to NATO, but we don't. So, of course, I understand that people worried about the situation, but we should understand if we will not stop him right now, it will be dangerous for the whole world. So we should be brave and do whatever we can to stop this monster. Final thought, you strike me as being the sort of guy that if you do disagree with your lovely wife, you'd say it, but I'm sensing from your eyes you don't disagree with the word of that. I don't disagree with anything of that. I mean, you know, any, any husband and wife has a disagreement part, point, but, you know, what she's saying is totally correct. Um, you know, I've lived in Ukraine 2015, the year after, you know, the invasion of Donbass and the annexation of Crimea. Um, I know people that have been killed. I know military people. I know, you know, high up officers and, you know, I know the situation. This has been going on and it's been smouldering. Uh, for quite a while. This is blown up now and this is serious. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for finding time for us. Thank uh, you. And we wish you both well, all three of you well. Thank and, you very uh, much. Keep in touch with us and, and let us know how it develops and, and perhaps come in and uh, bring us up to date, particularly if you hear from friends and family in Ukraine. But let, let's okay. all hope and pray it ends well. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks very much indeed. Thomas Jones and his wife, Irinia, and their lovely doggy there. Uh, they managed to leave Ukraine and find safety here in the UK and they are very welcome. You're watching.